Welcome, welcome back to another episode of Uploaded and Unfiltered, the podcast in which I, your host, Kryptonite, interviews another creator in regards to their content creation journey thus far. Tonight, I have a special guest. As always, I'm going to read their bio, give you a bit of information on them before we get them on the podcast and get them talking. Nerd since birth, Jamal Witherspoon, aka Dip Gaming, has been gaming since the age of three and has always been a fan of cartoons, superheroes, and video games. Dip loves meeting and supporting his peers in the content creation space and often showcases them in his TikTok series, Black Gamer Guys Slash Girls You Should Know. Without further ado, I'd like to introduce my guest for the evening, Dipped Gaming, aka Dipped. How you doing? Welcome to the podcast. That's stream. Welcome to the podcast. <laughs> good evening. Good evening. Howdy, howdy. Glad to be here. Yes, sir, Dipped. As always, I wanted to thank you before we get started for uh, carving out some time. Oh, no, no problem. Thank you for having me. Yeah, of course. Of course. Again, this is me being selfish. I get to uh, inquire things that I've always wanted to know about my streamer friends. So I'm going to go ahead and get it started. Dipped, how did you get started in content creation? What's your origin story? So my origin story, as far as we're skipping all the gaming and the, the hobbies and the interest in tech and nerdy things right to the content creation. Right. That all started last generation. So they were, we're talking about last gaming generation, okay. Xbox One and PS4. Once you had the ability to clip your gameplay and send it to your phone, first of all, social media was really just taking off. I want to say 2015, 2016, as far as mm-hmm. Instagram and sharing content and things like that's when it became content, not just, hey, here's a picture of me and my dog. I'm just throwing this online for people to you know relate to. No, now, now you have things that you can post that people show genuine interest in. It's not just photographers in their niche. It's people in all walks of life. Mm -hmm. I started doing that. I was uploading clips of (laughs) Watch Dogs 1. (laughs) I was uploading clips of Destiny 1, Overwatch. Yeah. Like these were like the hot games of the last 10 years. Right. And once I realized I could share that, it just went from sharing it raw straight to the timeline to Oh, maybe I can edit this. Maybe mm-hmm. I can tweak this. Maybe I can add some audio or a uh, voiceover, things like that. Next thing you know, you're doing it all the time because you've built a community around it. You've met other people who do the same thing and you're learning. You're learning how to make the mm-hmm. same content, but better. Different ways, different programs, different everything. So it becomes content and you don't even realize it until now <laughs> you're six years in and you're invited yeah. to podcast to talk about it. <laughs> exactly. That is awesome. I love that. Like the opportunity came up, technology was there. You're like, I can I can clip my videos and put them up. Yeah. Say less. I'm here. Let's do this. They, they gave they gave us the tools. <laughs> exactly. They made it easier, affordable, and and that creation it just spark, sparks. Let's go. Let's run with it. Mm-hmm. It's funny you mentioned that because. Before El Gato became who they are, they always made peripherals for like video and audio solutions. And I remember buying this adapter. It allowed you to plug in a RCA <laughs> display. So it was like a VCR. It was supposed to allow you to record your own home videos, but I used it to play my Dreamcast games on my Mac. Oh, no, you had to hook up. You had to hook up for real. <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh, OK. And so, yeah, I so I definitely feel you. It was like once those consoles was like, hey, we know y'all like to share y'all achievements. Here you go. Let's make it easier. It was off to the yeah. races at that point. <laughs> looking at content creation, looking at the gaming space prior to last gen, like it's almost like looking at laptops mm-hmm. in like 1990. It's like, first of all, I didn't realize this existed just then. I don't know how people were doing it just beyond just beyond that era, like 360 back to PlayStation 2, mm-hmm. like just in TV before Twitch was what it, we know it to be now. People were doing it already with what now would be considered primitive means of doing so. So it's it's hard to imagine. <laughs> yeah, I can't. Like, looking at how we have our setups now, we got OBS, we got fucking chat. We got a plethora of chatbots to choose from. We have services that'll do your overlays and your alerts. Like, I don't understand. I don't know how they did it back then. I'm not even going to hold It you. seems like, so convenient now and intuitive. But before, I don't know. I can't fathom it's like our parents paying bills in the 90s you really went to a mailbox and dropped this in (laughs) right 
<laughs> you didn't just hit send on the no? Yeah, okay. you didn't just log in and pay the bill? Like, no. <laughs> <laughs> nah, we had to go to the building. We had to check in our hand and we had to look him in the we face. We had to talk to the lady. That's crazy. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I the way I try to avoid talking to people in my everyday life, it's it's kind of sad, but they make it so easy. I can self check out. I can check out and sit in my car and they bring it to my trunk. It's I have issues. Time, times have changed. <laughs> Time, technology has changed. Times have changed. It, it has. Yeah. And I look at it and like I, I want to say it's for the better. I guess it depends on how we treat it because there's a lot of dope ass technology that's coming out Mm -hmm. that's already out that's coming out in the future. I guess it just all depends on how we uh, interact with it. Yeah, yeah, it can it can either bring you together or push you further apart. One hundred percent, exactly. My knowledge has been satiated for now. Uh, (laughs) Let's go ahead and roll into the next section. How is your current mindset in regards to both your content? Or both and or your content and just the landscape of content in general right now. So content creation as it stands currently, both in my mindset and, and across the board, you have to you have to be flexible. Mm-hmm. You have to be able to adapt to the current landscape of things. And that includes the new games that are out, the new methods of gaming that are out. And the, the first thing that comes to mind is GTA mm-hmm. RP. Like once upon a time, it was just, it was The Sims over here. It was Grand Theft Auto over here. Yeah. Action versus cozy. And now people are modding their own universes that they're so entrenched in right. that it's its own, it's, its own genre. Mm-hmm. And it's really garnered an audience. And it's not something that, that I feel like I can do or that I can consume myself, but it's, a big, it's a big thing. So mm-hmm. gaming as we know it, the genres, the subgenres, there's a lot more stuff out there than hack and slash shooter. So finding what's new out there that you can connect with that other people enjoy is how you build your audience. You got to kind of be in touch with what people are watching and consuming. Right, exactly. That's funny you mentioned RB because I've lost a few homies to that game. Not like yeah. lost, like they're gone forever, but no, you're right. You're right. Once that game has its teeth in you, you, are, you said it right the first time. Stick with it. <laughs> You, yes, exactly. They're lost for me forever. Um, <laughs> I, I, I want to engage. Like, I want to jump in. I feel like it would be fun, but I swear I set it up and I looked at everything. And I'm like, but it's still, it's still GTA for me. So I was like, I can't. I'm just gonna consume everybody else's uh, content. Yeah. It's hilarious. It's in, in, inspiring, but I'm, I'm not there yet. <laughs> <laughs> and I probably won't be, and that's okay. There's new games coming. Like, of course, now what is kind of grabbing me now, the gotcha games are grabbing me, mm-hmm. where I didn't think they would. The Genshin Impacts, the the whole horror. Really? Of so, yeah. Have you seen that game, Zenless Zone Zero, that's coming out? Yes, I saw it, and they tricked me. I didn't know what it was, and I was I was in. And then somebody told me it was a gotcha game, and I don't know how to feel now. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's... They haven't gotten me with any tr- microtransactions yet because they they just had a beta for that, which was was it was open for the whole month. It was open from like tail end in November to Christmas Eve. It just closed. I think I didn't appreciate it while I had it because I played it for a few weeks, was locked in, and then suddenly they were like, "Hey, the test is closing." I was like, "Wait, wait!" I didn't finish everything you gave me access to, <laughs> and now I just downloaded Honkai Star Rail, which is a, a turn based RPG from the same people. Oh, okay. And it's, it's a gotcha game, too? It is. It is. It's another one of those games where as you play, you earn resources and things like that. You roll to unlock new characters. You level them up. It's it's a grind. Okay. And I know how big the, the Genshin community is. So that's something that you mm-hmm. might get from me in 2024. Possibly. Okay. Hey, hey, exclusive. You heard it here first. <laughs> yeah, yeah, breaking news. <laughs> uh, that's dope. On that, I think... Uh, w- one of the homies, uh, do you, you know TG Terrible Gamer? Yeah, TG TG's dope. Yeah, he uh, one thing I was talking to Boss about this. One thing that he did with his YouTube channel, like, okay, from the outside looking in, like he mm-hmm. went to a genre that I didn't even know. Like it just seems out of left field, but I think he was re- he's doing like reactions to like K-pop videos or something of that nature. <laughs> There's so many things he's killing, and I was like, I never even like. This, I guess this is my point. I never thought to look outside of the things that I've been doing 
mm-hmm. to like grow another channel because like that was a smart move i was like oh all right and people are eating this content up i'm like i like that that was inspiring thank you for what, that. whatever you do whatever you do you have to lean into it because if you do it long enough people will find it that's the whole thing with streaming it's from the time that i started streaming my main belief was create the type of content you like create the type of content that you would see yes. that you would think is funny that you would share yourself and it will find its audience mm-hmm. now as you go on as more things open up you got to kind of explore what some of those things are. Mm -hmm. And that's where I am in my journey. I'm looking for the second act. What can I do now that can grab the next audience? And to do that, you have to consume. Mm -hmm. So many of us are busy making content, editing, recording, doing everything that how often do you get a chance to consume Mm -hmm. the content from the people we know, all the people we know that are creating content on Twitch, kick, Everywhere, YouTube, everywhere, if you don't consume enough of it, you kind of fall out of balance with what's what not what's hot. I don't want to say what's hot, but you know what I mean? Like you 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 understand what's out there now, because like there's definitely a lot of stuff like even if you don't rock with it, you might be able to pivot off of that. Like You might get inspired uh, to do something else. Mm -hmm. But yeah, no, I 100 percent agree. Like if you're not consuming content that you are creating, I don't know. I just feel weird. It feels weird to me. Like if I wasn't, I'll just talk about myself. If I wasn't consuming content that I'm even making, like I would feel out of touch. Right. Simple as that. So I used to consume a lot of YouTube. Like I want to say 2014, I used to watch Philip DeFranco, Source Fed. That was my every day on YouTube. They were putting out two to three videos a day for counting both channels. God damn. They were putting out a lot of stuff. Wow. I would. That was the that was my prime in YouTube, watching that every day. Since that era, I don't mm-hmm. really watch a lot of YouTube. Okay. Like, I don't know what about YouTube doesn't connect with me. I think I'm addicted to the high of live action, interacting with the audience. That's why streaming is my thing. Wow. I like to talk to people. I like to you know comment on the game, what everybody's doing, mm-hmm. where you are in life. So now I'm trying to shift over to the YouTube space again now in 2023 and everyone's got a head start so i have to understand i'm in research mode right now yeah. I'm trying to understand what people are creating how they're positioning it so mm-hmm. I'm, I'm learning from a lot of my peers shout out to my homie collard gaming true smash uh lila mm-hmm. bobina of course i know a lot of people who are, are oh nerd nerd stuff nird stuff nerd stuff he's another big youtuber like and also barefoot tasha mm-hmm. and a lot of those guys, oh, I'm yeah, learning yeah, yeah. so much just watching now. So that's where I'm at now trying to figure right. out how to proposit like, you know, how to pivot into 2024. Hell yeah. That's dope. You know what? I'm going to go ahead and segue. I've been thinking about this for a while because you mentioned earlier, uh, you said uh, six years you've been doing this or has it been a little bit longer? But I, I've been doing this since <laughs> since The Last of Us 1 came out the second time. <laughs> 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 the, the second, second time, time. Oh, the going. second time the ps4 <laughs> bundle that came with the last of us that's when i got my yeah. ps4 yeah okay and that's when you was like i'm doing this yeah that's when i was doing it i had got the i got the xbox one at launch so that was 2013 i believe okay. 2014 and then i got ps4 the following year and the first stream i did first full let's play i did was quantum break Okay. on the xbox one wow yeah wow. With man with ice man from x-men <laughs> yeah that was my Holy first full playthrough. How, you know what i never played it i saw the commercials and i remember they're trying to weave in a tv show or something or it, I don't remember. interesting game it's on game pass now no the quantum break excellent game it's from the people who make uh alan wake and um in control oh yeah that's right so I believe so. Yeah, that okay. same group Control of people. So amazing. Yes. They, those games make you feel extremely OP with the powers that you get. The way they tried to work that in, I remember when they switched it because they had mm-hmm. a random no face protagonist, but then they switched it to the guy from X-Men. I okay. can't remember his name, but you you know who I'm oh, talking yeah. about when you see I can't the guy. remember his name either. He has a twin mm-hmm. also, that guy. <laughs> but they switched oh, him into it. What the hell? Yeah, no, he has a twin. <laughs> I, yeah. I, don't, I'm, I feel like looking it up, but That's crazy. I don't want to get off too off track, but they did weave a TV <laughs> show into that game. Like in between each chapter, 
there was a live action mm-hmm. portion. Uh, rest in peace, Lance Reddick. He was uh, a big part of that story as well. And it had branching paths okay. that you could choose that affected the story and how the next couple chapters played out. So a very interesting game. If you yeah. hadn't haven't played it, please play Quantum Break. I'm sure it runs a lot better <laughs> on the S series than this, the series X <laughs> than it did on the one. Those yeah. loading screens are crazy. Yeah. <laughs> I can't even imagine. That's I'm th- thank you for letting me know that's on Game Pass because I've been meaning to touch that. I'm gonna do it now because it's there. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's it's very worth it. it. You would enjoy the action. I can't wait. Like ugh, control. <laughs> I wish I could forget control and just play it again, but oh yeah, it's not yeah. possible. All right, Deb. We're jumping into lessons learned. You've been creating content for this for a good amount of time, so you've had a chance to like gather your a few bits of information lessons in your back pocket what Mm -hmm. is something that you've learned because you started creating content it takes a lot more time than you realize you you may it may come natural to you you may be able to hit record Mm -hmm. and instantly jump right in but your focus has to be there like if you Mm -hmm. can focus and get it done you will be in for a ride that never stops so number one, yeah, focus focus for as long as you can while your mind's in it. Do it while you have the time. Do mm-hmm. it while you have no other commitments because then you'll take off and then you'll wonder what you were doing otherwise. But do it before you have too many commitments. Yeah. That I will say that. True. Um, second, what would I say as far as what I've learned? Yeah, consume. Mm-hmm. Like learn from your peers It's like with streaming, watch your your peers in the space, genuinely show an interest in what other people doing what you do are doing like genuinely, like not to mm-hmm. kind of like bite their style or anything like that. But meet people who are doing the same thing you're doing and you can bounce ideas off each other in, in just being in the audience, yes. just being in chat and watching what people are doing. You're going to learn so much. No, no one idea is brand new under the sun. There's nothing new under the sun. So if you watch, you'll get different perspectives on the same thing that we're all doing, whether it's how to get your chat engaged, whether it's a different way to edit a new program, consume as much as you can. If this is something you want to seriously pursue, because you will run out of ideas. It is it is hard to say that you will not run out of ideas, but you will you will hit a wall at some point and to push through to creatively evolve. Mm-hmm. You have to see what's out there. So pay attention and definitely uh, stay in tune with the community. Hell yeah. Yo, I couldn't have said that better. I love that. <laughs> I need to hear that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. You got any you got any you got another lesson in your back pocket? I mean, um... you're dropping science right now. Man, I, I I try. I try. No pressure. You don't. Have, you don't need one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But no, that that's the main thing. Is like because it takes a lot of time to do this. And now, like especially once you get a nine to five and mm-hmm. everything, if this isn't your main grind already, you are you are slicing the pie up. You really are slicing the pie up. Yes. So the other the other thing is, if you can hire out, delegate. If you can get an editor. That will save you so much time to just focus on the, the creation of it and then leave posts, leave posts to somebody else. If your funds allow, definitely support right. somebody, you know, who is an editor and is doing it. I went to school mm-hmm. for production, like production, like radio production, video really? production, things like that. Yeah. So I know how to do oh. almost everything myself. But keep, you know how it is keeping up with your industry. There's always changes, evolutions in the technology that you use. Um, mm-hmm. switching from Final Cut Pro to Adobe Premiere for video editing, things like that. Learning all that and trying to keep up with that. Yeah. You can't do everything yourself. You can, but man, right. the time the time you have to have available to do that, insane. Yeah. So and I know how people can be proud. I can be very proud of myself, like not wanting to let go of certain aspects of the creative process. So, but uh, if, if, as you as you mm-hmm. go, as you meet people, you know people who can do what you do, and it's like, hey, support another creative by you know collaborating. That's one way to do it. Like, hey, can you exactly. edit these clips for me? I got this much footage. Can you do this? It keeps the whole train going, so it frees you up to do other stuff. Right, one hundred percent. You know what? We kind of, I know that's a lessons learned, but I feel like. All lessons learned by other people can be words of advice for other people, and I think we all know that. But I want to mm-hmm. officially 
<laughs> Slide into this next topic. New content creators who have all the bells and whistles. You know what? I'm going to let you answer this how you want, but I wanted to say before, like, don't worry too much about the technology side because even when we were starting, like, that shit was crazy as far as technology, and we still pushed through it because we yeah. really wanted to do what we're doing now. So, And it's easier now. There's just so many more options. 100%. Yeah. Yes. And so many more places to stream. You can now multi-stream to Twitch and YouTube and TikTok and Instagram. You have options. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> but I was just I was just getting the information to do the Instagram thing last night. Like you can see me on Instagram soon. Like I just got the stuff from uh push play. Shout out to the uh D- push play to DJ. I saw yeah. his reel yep. on how to do it. And I was like, oh yeah, <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, no, I'm definitely gonna try that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Shout out to the homie push. He hit me up and I was like, because I saw him, he was like, Yeah, I'm streaming to Instagram. I'm like, what? Drop the knowledge. I'm like, all right, I gotta figure out how to figure fix that up. Again, we have opportunities out here that weren't there two, three, four years ago. So it's it's Absolutely. very vibrant and like you have an option. But regardless, if I came to you, Dipton was like, I need I need some advice. You had elevator pitch to give me some advice. What type of advice would you give me in regards to starting my content creation from scratch? Yeah, I would say, like I said in the beginning, create the type of content you want to see. You are not the only person who thinks the same who has the same humor as you mm-hmm. and and that and the perfect example of that is tiktok if you scroll through tiktok you see how many things are remixed how <laughs> many people have either dark humor or the same type of humor as you and are making the same content that hey i had that idea or i can i can flip that and make a similar version of that to my niche everyone has their own niche and you can tailor almost anything to your niche and as long as you know what that is Hey, you there's other people, there's a millions of other people who want to see the same stuff that you do. Yes, exactly. And I think that point right there is what we need to remember. And it's kind of hard to convince yourself, but once you see it, once you've been doing it for this long, it's like, no, content goes. Like you just need to make mm-hmm. it. There's an audience out there for it. Somebody's gonna watch it. Absolutely. I think you I think you knocked that out of the park. Um, we started with the best word of advice you can get and ended with the best word of advice you can get. I'm not even, I'm not going to push it. I'm telling you that is, it is what it is. It, it doesn't get too much deeper than that, but stay creative, stay. You have to always be yes. brainstorming and you have to feed, you have to feed the brain. Like if you're not taken in, you're, you're going to run out of things to put out. Mm-hmm. With that, I, I can't think of a better way to segue into this dip. Where can the masses find your content? You've been speaking on it for the last uh, couple of minutes. I know where I can find it, but where can the people find your content? <laughs> oh, where can, where can the people find me? Where can they find me? Yeah, uh, yeah. You, you can find me on Twitch, twitch.tv slash dip gaming. You can find me on YouTube as well, dip underscore gaming. You can find me on TikTok, of course, dip gaming TTV on TikTok. Um, and yeah, Instagram x for the time being (laughs) and yeah just i'm dip gaming across all platforms find me where you threads find me on threads dip gaming um but yeah i'm gonna be ramping things up for 2024 if you have if you had the pleasure to catch when we were doing among days in the height of the pandemic i'm thinking of bringing among us back with Mm -hmm. a new a new crew new cast of people so you want to get involved in that definitely pull up and also more more party games i want to play more games with the community a a story story games are a big part of kind of like passive content creation and drawing in viewers but i like to play with people like my fellow content creators viewers and things like that so there's going to be a lot of a lot of party games a lot of multiplayer events the finals is the is my new favorite shooter I need to get into that. The finals is crazy. The finals is nuts. Uh, I've been I've, I've been getting mopped up, but right. it's it's different from <laughs> the the current <laughs> the current battle royale craze. It's still still leading the okay. pack, but the finals elimination style respawns. It's it's a breath of fresh air compared to duty and Fortnite okay. on the other end of the spectrum. So uh, yeah, right. there's a lot of things that I want to mm-hmm. play with with everybody out there. So pull up. 
Hell yeah. Well, again, if you have not already followed this man, do so. I will have his links in the description. Dipped, I appreciate you. Thank you for doing this. This was fun as hell. Hey, thank you, man. I'm, I'm a man of not too many words, but they hit hard. They hit hard. So I appreciate you being able to yeah, come on. Hell yeah. <laughs> I'm here for a good time, not a long time. Amen. <laughs> hell yeah. You know what? Get it in and get out. That's what we yeah, doing. No. <laughs> Yo, as always, uh, if you know anyone out there who can benefit from conversations like these and more between creators who have been doing this for a while, share the podcast with them. Upload it on Unfiltered. I am everywhere podcast wise. Uh, just search for it and we should be there. Leave me a review, leave me a comment, and I'll probably reply to it. Other than that, I again, I want to thank Dip for doing a podcast with me tonight. I, I'm going to be a little fanboy here. Almost everybody I've had on my podcast are people that I seen when I was just starting or during my duration of like streaming and creating content. I saw them and I'm like, even if we never had like a long ass conversation, I was like, I rock with that. Like that person is doing something that other people are striving to do. And like, I appreciate that. So dip everything that you've been putting out from like, I think the thing that really gets me is just like how I don't want to say random, but I'm going to say random. Like your, your videos are with the like voiceover and you're like, you're acting and you're actually doing skits. Like I envy that shit. Like I don't know how to do skits. So your shit is, is inspiring. So keep that shit up. Man. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But other than that, yo, everybody out there, as always, protect your mental, keep creating content, and I will see y'all in the next one. Peace. <laughs>